ASP.NET is one of a family of software packages known as application servers. An application server is a piece of software that's installed on a web server to create a dynamic application platform. The World Wide Web includes many clients and servers that are connected over the Internet. Technically speaking, they communicate using a protocol called TCP IP. This is the protocol that connects all of the computers in the whole world together. When these computers talk to each other, they exchange messages in a format known as HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This sort of communication is used whether you're working with a static website, that is a website that delivers static fixed web pages, or a dynamic web application, such as those that are supported by ASP.NET. A client starts the process by sending a request in the HTTP format the client requests a web resource, which might be a web page, an image file, or text files that contain JavaScript or cascading stylesheet code known as CSS. The server responds by sending back the resource that's been requested. Regardless of whether you're working in a static or a dynamic environment, the client uses a bit of software called the web browser. Personal computers, such as those running on Windows or Mac, use web browsers such as Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Safari. There are many other kinds of web clients, though, including cell phones and PDAs, such as Blackberries. The web server is a computer that runs a piece of software called the HTTP server. There are two major HTTP server products on the market. Microsoft's Internet Information Services, also known as IIS, which is only available for the Windows platform, and Apache, which is a free HTTP server product developed by and provided by the Apache Foundation. If you're going to work with ASP.NET, you'll be deploying your web application or your dynamic website using Internet Information Services because only IIS does a good job of integrating the ASP.NET application server. Here's how a static web page works. The web client makes a request for the resource, let's say a web page, by sending an HTTP formatted request over the internet to the server. The server responds by locating the file on its hard disk that's been requested. This is known as a static web page with a file extension typically of .htm or .html. The web server responds by sending that content back to the client. And the client, which might be a web browser on a personal computer, renders and displays the web page visually. When you move to the dynamic environment, the application server software is installed on the same computer as the web server, let's say Internet Information Services and ASP.NET. The application server, in this case ASP.NET, can communicate with the database and with other server resources. Once again, the web client makes the HTTP formatted request. The web server talks to the application server, the application server talks to the database and other network resources, and then it's up to the web server to construct an HTML formatted response, which once again is sent back to the web client. The important thing here is that the web browser doesn't know that there's an application server at work, and therefore doesn't need any additional software. It requests an HTML page, and it receives an HTML page, and it doesn't know the difference between one that's static and fixed on the server's hard disk, and one that's being generated dynamically in response to its request. There are many software packages that you can select from as application servers. If you're watching this video series, you've probably already selected ASP.NET, or you're evaluating it for possible use in your organization. Microsoft Active Server Pages, or ASP, is another option that you might select. Active Server Pages is an older version of Microsoft's application server technology. You can also select Adobe Cold Fusion, a cross-operating system product that works on many operating systems including Windows, Mac, and Linux, and that uses its own proprietary language, Cold Fusion Markup Language. Some developers use PHP, a completely free and open source product that once again is available on many operating systems. And for Java developers, there are many application server products available, including WebSphere from IBM, WebLogic from Oracle, formerly from BEA, JBoss, a completely free J2EE or Java-based server, and others. And finally, there's Microsoft's ASP.NET. 
As you'll learn in this video series, ASP.NET is an object-oriented platform that allows you to select from multiple programming languages to create a dynamic web-based application where the client makes a standard HTTP request and the server responds by constructing HTML dynamically and sending that content back to the client. These pages can include JavaScript code, cascading style sheets, image files, and everything else that you might include in a static web page. So that's a look at the basic architecture of ASP.NET. In other videos in this chapter, I describe how to install ASP.NET along with a product called Visual Web Developer, an integrated development environment that can get you started quickly building ASP.NET-based dynamic web applications.